Hi everyone, my name is Darren, I'm the Chef Director here at the Ashburn Cookery School and we're celebrating Cookery Schools Week. Now, part of us embracing food and showing people how to become better chefs in the future ties in really well with the celebration of cookery schools across the UK. In these trying times, what I thought I would do today is do a fantastic dish using some really local fish to us here in the southwest. I've got these beautiful day boat port mackerel, um, you know, high in omega-3 fish oils, everything that you might want from um, in your diet, really super nutritional. And also, I just want to simplify everything. We all know that uh, people catch mackerel for a pastime. How many people we get here on the course that says, my husband's a mackerel fisherman, my neighbor will bring in some fish, I really don't know what to do with it. Which is why I've exactly left it as it is, with the guts in, so I can show you and I can take the mystique away of how to do this successfully and cleanly, which I think puts a lot of people off. One of the things I'm very proud of here is making people leave believing they can actually do it because they're learning off the professionals. And there's nothing quite like actually having this fish in front of you with a professional beside you, guiding you through the process. It's so much better than books and you can watch as many videos as you like, but sometimes just being absorbed with it and having a go is, is the best way forward. And listen, at the end of the day, it's a relatively cheap fish. If you mess it up slightly, who cares? It's absolutely fine. You'll get a really good result. Now, what I've decided to do is make a really simple coleslaw with this. So we're gonna make a, a, a coleslaw, which I'll talk about a bit later once I've filleted the fish. Then we're gonna put a super rosemary and lemon crust on top of the mackerel before we go into the oven. So, onto the fish. I have these lovely mackerel here. And the first thing that we need to do with these is just do a quick inspection, make sure the eyes are nice and bright, make sure they smell of the sea, nothing too hideous. Um, but you know, the thing is with mackerel, you always know that they've just come straight off the boat and straight to us under ice and they're good to go. So these are a super, super example of mackerel here. Now, the key thing is most people get a bit tetchy, if you like, about taking the guts out. But I want to do this and show you how to do it where you can keep your kitchen quite clean. I'm wearing gloves, it's just something I prepare, uh, you know, I prefer to do. I feel that when I'm wearing gloves, I don't sort of slip so much with the fish. However, you, you don't have to, you could just do it with your hands. Now, with this fish, to remove the guts, I'm going to show you this very simply. I'm just going to pull this little fin back here and, and I'm just going to cut round the head like so. So you can see I'm just in there like that, okay? Then I'm gonna turn the fish over and I'm gonna do the same, just cut inside there. And if I turn it up here, look, what I need to do is just put a little, like, little cut into there and I can clearly see the guts in that area of the, of the head. Now, where a lot of people go wrong, I think, is they quite often slit the fish up through the belly okay and then pull on the guts and naturally what happens the guts are attached to the head and the head moves so what i'm doing here is i've i basically take a little bit of kitchen roll i snap the head look watch what happens i just literally pull nearly all the guts out in one keeping it all nice and clean now have a look at this. This is what we would naturally do before we took the head off, but I've just changed my technique to make things nice and easy. So I go up with my knife and any little remaining bits that are left there, just get a bit of tissue paper, pull it out, and nothing could be cleaner or simpler. I haven't gotten a mess, my hands are still clean, and my board's relatively clean. So, there's my mackerel ready for filleting. So my next tip is get yourself a little bit of kitchen rope and some cold water. Hold it up a couple of times. Like so. So it's just nice and damp. I quite like having this beside me when I'm filleting fish because I can just clean the knife off and I'm keeping everything nice and clean at the same time. So, filleting a fish is very, very straightforward, okay? 
On a mackerel, we have two fillets. We have one this side and one that side. What is key is that each fillet comes off either side of these little bones that are sticking up here, okay? So, nice clean knife, push down on the mackerel with my thumb, and that makes the flesh a little bit taut just through there. So my knife now should go through nice and easily, keeping it nice and tight to the, to the frame. And then, can you see the frame of the bone there? That's the bones there. So I'm not really wasting anything. It's got a nice soft flesh. My knife comes through like that, all the way through. And I just follow it down. Follow the path of the bones. You can hear them with the point of the knife. Yeah. And nothing could be simpler. That's your first fillet off the bone. And look how full it is. And look how much I have not wasted because I've been able to keep it nice and tight to the bone. That's the key, nice sharp fillet knife. Now watch what happens for the second fillet. Because the second fillet on any fish is always a little bit different and a little bit more difficult. So for that, I turn the fish upside down and I have a little look at where I am and I go tail to head and I bring my knife through this side. Pop my knife through like that, go all the way up and then just go straight through the bones the other way. Pull it as you go. And there is your second fillet. And that there, pretty much how to fillet a mackerel from scratch. Really simple, really easy. And please don't get too uptight if you leave a little bit of fish on the bone here and there. That's not the end of the world. Mackerel is a really sustainable fish. It's really good value. And it is something, certainly here at Ashburton, that we like to promote a lot because you need to be eating fish that's caught around your waters wherever you can um, because that's just going to give you the freshest fish that you can possibly buy. So, cleaning as I go, always quite important. I'm just going to wipe my board over, just keeping everything nice and dry. I don't want anything to get too slippy and so that's why I have my sort of prep all ready to go. Okay. Now, so I'm gonna take one of these fillets and show you a really, really quick and easy way of, of, of eating this fish without the bone. One of the things that puts people off mackerel are bones. And I'm not gonna lie, there's a lot of them. As I go down through there now, if I use my knife, you might be able to hear, you can see them and they go literally from the head right through to the tail, okay? And you don't really want them in your dish, in your finished fish. Some people like eating fish whole. I prefer to eat fish with the bones completely removed. So what I do is I'm just gonna trim off the fish where the guts were, only because mackerel will pretty much eat most things in the sea, so the guts can be a little bit bitter. And this is my little sort of little trick now. So I just go down one side of the bone all the way through and remove that. Then you can see the bones and you can hear them. They've all got to come out. So this is the easiest way to achieve that. Go all the way down. That bit there is full of bone. That's your waste. Now, this is the key. When I get this fish, if I push both of these fillets together and I'll put them on a tray in a minute I promise you that they will fuse the proteins in the fish will fuse together as that cooks and it will come out off the baking tray and appear like one fillet of fish but with no bones whatsoever and that's the key absolutely no bones so if I get my baking tray so I've got my baking tray here okay Going to literally trim off the end bit of tail just to neaten everything up. And now I'm just going to take just a little bit of olive oil just for flavour more than anything else. And I'm going to rub that onto my tray. Just 
just like so. I'm going to take my fillet, no bones, and take the other side and push it together. So something like that. And that's your fillet of mackerel ready for a, a breadcrumb topping. Okay, so I'm gonna make this fantastic little rosemary crust. Now, what you find with mackerel, because it's quite a strong flavor, it really does live with strong flavors, hence the fact I'm gonna put rosemary with it, which is quite unusual for fish, but it will really live with this mackerel, no problem at all. So I've got some breadcrumbs, just some sort of dry breadcrumbs, and I've got some chopped up rosemary, actually from my garden, this is, um, you know, everybody sort of manages to get over some rosemary from here, there and everywhere, so. That's lovely, it's a real robust herb, sticks, sticks around all year, no problem at all really. So the rosemary goes in with the, um, in with the breadcrumbs. Just gonna pop a little bit of lemon zest in there, just to sort of liven up slightly. Again, you don't have to, you could leave it out, but I quite like the, uh, the, the sort of little injection of flavor that, I think sometimes it's underestimated just how much um, flavor and aroma you get from the zest of citrus fruits. So a little bit of sea salt going in there. Okay, a little bit of ground black pepper just for seasoning. Now the real key to success here is rather than just putting on a sort of dry breadcrumb mix, which will just make everything really dry, um, we pop some, some oil in. Now I'm using olive oil for flavor. I try and use a, a flavored oil if you can. Um, and what I'm trying to do is just Dampen down the breadcrumbs with my fingers, how easy is this, and a little bit of oil. And what that will do, it will just sort of fry the breadcrumb on the top of the fish while it's in the oven, and it will just make a massive difference. So, I'm just going to take my crumb, I'm going to like push it together, and I want, I want to see it glisten, I want to see this sort of oil slightly coming through. And then I'm just gonna sprinkle it onto my fish. I can go back and be a little bit more tidy in a moment. Let's just get it on the fish like we are now. This is really simple. What this does is it, it adds texture to the fish as well. So the, most flesh of fish is generally quite soft. Whereas by putting a, a sort of crumb on, you're just basically getting something nice and crisp but you know keeping it quite healthy we're not frying this fish we're going to bake it in the oven so i'm going to just uh, make sure we keep it all nice and healthy so that fish there is ready for the oven now i would suggest that at about 180 to 200 degrees c i wouldn't expect these fillets of mackerel to take much more than about four minutes um, now that quite often horrifies people when you speak to them about cooking fish but I think most people agree, certainly when they've been on a fish course with us, that they generally do overcook fish. And the real key to success is keeping it moist and beautiful and just cooked throughout. So into the oven now. And that will allow the crumb, because it's got the oil in it, just to sort of go nice and golden and just impart some really nice flavour. So, what I think we're gonna do now is put my coastal together. So a quick wash of my hands and remove my breadcrumb. And I just wanna show you these ingredients that I've got here. So I've got some grated carrot, nothing simpler. Uh, this here is some sort of fine strips. I mean, we use a posh word in the trade, we call it a julienne, but uh, it's just literally fine strips. Now, what I've done is I've used fennel rather than white cabbage. I'm making a coleslaw with fennel. I still think to today fennel is one of the most underrated vegetables that quite often sort of sadly ends up at the back of the supermarket because nobody really knows quite what to do with it. It is a fantastic accompaniment with fish and raw is so fresh, so vibrant, slight aniseedy flavour works really well. I often make fennel coleslaw at home rather than a white cabbage coleslaw. We have a little bit of mayonnaise, just pre-bought mayonnaise, a little bit of grain mustard rather than English mustard, just to see some grain going through it. You could even add a little bit of lemon zest if you want to into the coleslaw and some seasoning as well. So what we do, 
So we put our fennel in for the bow. We put our carrot into the bow. Nice and easy. And then we take some mayonnaise. I'm going to go with a little spoonful of grain mustard first. I can always add some more if I think it's necessary. And then I'm going to take my mayonnaise. And put a decent sort of dollop of good quality mayonnaise in there. And then just start mixing. Mix it round. And really mix it well because the mustard will generally sort of want to clump up in the bowl a little bit. So I want to make sure that, that mustard is distributed throughout the coleslaw. Let's add a little bit of um, salt and pepper into there. And I think I will go just for, because I've got it here and I think it will just really lift the flavours in this coleslaw as well. Again, another stir. And ideally you want, so you don't want it to be swimming in mayonnaise, you don't want it to be swimming in mustard, you just want it to be nicely coated. So it's really fresh and vibrant. Now, what I would always suggest here is that you get your preparation done fast. One of the things that we're really keen to drive home to people here at Ashburton is if you put the energy and the work into the preparation, the actual finishing and cooking is, is, is pretty easy really, but it does take, you know, you should enjoy the preparation. That's the key, because you know what's coming at the end of it. So you see, I have myself prepared and I put the coleslaw together at the last minute. Don't have your coleslaw with your mayonnaise and your mustard all in, because over a period of time, the acidity from the mustard will break down all of the sort of, the moisture in the fennel and the carrot and all become a bit loose and a bit runny. Um, and it won't be anywhere near as vibrant as it could be. So I'm just going to have a little quick taste of this. Right. Just a tiny bit more sea salt. You can't believe just how much that, that lemon comes through. Absolutely beautiful. One final mix. You can see the mustard running through it. It's not over the top, you just see the grains of mustard running through it, and that's exactly as we want it to be. So we're pretty much ready to put the dish together. So, we've got a quick look at our fish. And if we look at our fish there, and I touch it, it's still just slightly undercooked. You might just see that it's just glistening there. It's close, but not close enough. I want to give it a little bit longer. The key to fish cookery is understanding that you want it perfectly cooked when it hits the table, not while you're plating it. So you always allow that minute or two while you're plating up your food for your fish to be actually perfect by the time it reaches your guests or your friends that you're cooking for in a dinner party or just as a family meal. So, I'm going to get my plate ready while well, that's got a couple more minutes cooking time to go. Um, now, like I said, I'm just going to serve this with the coleslaw, but you could dress this up with some lovely new potatoes, some rockets, some local dressed salad leaves. But I'm going to create a bed of, of this super coleslaw here for the mackerel to sit on. So I'm not going to overdo it. that much. Pushing down just slightly and that should enable me to get my mackerel off. Now ideally what I want is a sort of palette knife for fish or a fish slice or something that enables me to get the fish off at ease. Um, and you just get yourself ready before you go. So if you were cooking for numbers, you have three or four of these plates already done up and then you're literally just moving the fish off and putting it straight onto the coastal. I would say, because I've served this a few times at a dinner party, that this just is a very simple starter, one mackerel fillet each and the coastal 
is a really, really nice way to start a meal. But like I said, it's learning, I think, sometimes how to take dishes in all sorts of directions. Um, because, you know, no, no, no glove necessarily has to fit all. There are no real strict rules. And I think the more freedom you get in your cooking, probably the better. Okay. So, when, when, when we talk to, uh, to customers and students, I always say to them, you're, you're cooking with all your senses, your smell, your nose, your ears. I can actually hear that crumb working on top of the fish. It's contracting and it's making a lovely sound. Um, and then finally, your, your eyes, you're having a, a sort of look to see whether that fish is cooked. Now, hopefully you'll be able to see this on the camera, but if I push that fish like that now, you can see that it's still soft, but it's still cooking. I can hear that it's still cooking, okay? You get this sort of little tiny crackle from the breadcrumb, got a nice little golden color on it. So I'm happy with that. I think by the time I actually get that to my guests or members of my family, I have absolutely every confidence that it will be perfectly cooked. No. take my palette knife and I very quickly keep this fish together. Push it onto my coastal. And there you go. Bonus fillet of mackerel. I'm gonna finish that with a little bit of olive oil. And I've got some beautiful sort of baby purple basil leaves which are really Go with everything beautifully, just going down through the fish. And that's it, that's a fillet of mackerel with a rosemary and lemon crust, a beautiful fennel and grey mustard coastal, finished with a little bit of baby basil on the top. Absolutely divine, represents everything that we, we do here at Ashburn as far as sustainability of fish, simple cooking, but executing everything with passion with passion and flair that you will always get from the chef tutors while you're learning here.